Hello, we're going to be in Psalm 29 today, Psalm 29, and this particular psalm is a psalm that is focused on the attributes of God, focused on those attributes for which God is to be praised. So we're in Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in holy array. Now we live in a culture that is very works driven and is very prone to figuring out what we can do for the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with doing for the Lord, but I believe that it is secondary to ascribing glory to him, acknowledging him for who he is. He's God. Uh, it's not so much about religion as much as acknowledging the creator for the gifts of life and breath, our food, clothing, shelter, our jobs, our family, our situations, our joys, sorrows, trials, tribulations, all of those things, uh, we are to ascribe glory to the Lord for them. And so as we acknowledge God in everything we do, um, these things were, will become more pronounced. And it is not one of these things where we hide under a bushel. The church, if characterized by love, is also to be ascribing glory to God. And these are regular things. It's not, uh, it shouldn't be abnormal. You know, when we speak of worship, adoration, honor, magnification, glory, and so forth, uh, those things should not be abnormal. They shouldn't be strange for the believer. It shouldn't be strange to talk to our children about God, to talk to our friends about God, to talk to secularists, uh, believers, humanists. It shouldn't be strange. You know, we should, we, we should discuss God. And uh, it's not one of those things we do in a harsh way or, you know, if you don't believe, we're, we're, I'm going to unfriend you. <laughs> shouldn't be like that. But rather, these are, are just normal things for which we are to give God glory. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon, and he makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to calve and strips the forest bare. In his temple, everything says glory. The Lord sat as king of the flood. Yes, the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Now, at first reading, we might just say, wow, that's a powerful God and how he demonstrates his power in creation. However, when we look at the voice of the Lord as Christ, the voice, the word, the logos, the gospel, the chapter takes on new meaning. The gospel of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. How? Through the gospel. Through the gospel, there is victory. The Lord is over many waters, and waters and sea and coastlands and isles often refer to the Gentiles. The gospel of the Lord is powerful. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation. The gospel, so I'm substituting gospel for voice, okay? The gospel of the Lord is majestic. The gospel of the Lord breaks the cedars. People are oftentimes likened unto trees, pine trees, fir trees, acacia trees, oaks of righteousness, cedars of Lebanon, as we shall see. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. 
God says, is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The, the gospel of the Lord hews out flames of fire. The gospel of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The gospel of the Lord makes the deer to calve and strips the forests bare. Yes, in his temple, his church, everything cries or says glory. That's what the church proclaims. The Lord sat as king at the flood. Yes, the Lord sits as king forever. That's King Jesus. The Lord will give strength to his people. Is he talking about strength to just carry on through our day? Well, that's true, but this is the strength of salvation. The wings as eagles. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Jesus said, my peace I give, not as the world gives. The Bible says he has made peace through the blood of his cross. The voice of the Lord triumphs victoriously.